Gunpowder Handshake back here guys, part three of our video. What we're going to be covering now is a few more modifications, uh, putting our parts back in the firearm, getting everything back to work. Um, if you didn't uh, check video one and two, you'll need to go back and check it only because it shows you the teardown as well as the parts. Alright guys, of you who are on part three now, what we're going to do is go ahead and take our trigger out. What we're going to do is on this side, you're going to take your finger push lightly on that release. You can use your thumb. Turn it over and now you see the little screw right there. It's going to be a flat edge. You're going to put your screwdriver in it. Now you're going to push very lightly and you're going to turn back to the left. And then when you turn just the right way, you see that it came out. I'll lay that screwdriver down. I'll reach up and ever so gently pull the piece straight out. There it is, that's your mag release. Now once your mag release has come out, you take your finger and push on the trigger on the back of it. There it goes. Very, very simple, guys. Very simple. Go ahead and wipe it all down. And so this gun has been fired a few times, guys. So if you see some scratches and you think it's not a new gun, like I told you in the first video, I've had it for a few weeks. It's not. Uh, I'd say approximately about 200 rounds has been fired through the firearm. Okay, now, if you were replacing your trigger, you would take your new trigger. You want to make sure that the shorter side is up, longer side is down. If you look on the back of your firearm, you can kind of see where that little slit is there for it. Only one place you can go in it. Just drops right in. Now what you're going to want to do is take your mag release. Button goes in first. Also, pretty much only one way it can go in. Now what you're going to do is take your finger and give it some resistance. Just make it almost like it's, it's flush on the button side. Almost flush. And then you're just going to take your screwdriver and put in it and now you're going to turn to the right the opposite way you turned last time and it'll lock back in. Very simple. Okay. Now we've got your stock trigger or your aftermarket trigger, whichever may be the case in. Now we're going to work on the disconnecting the sear. Okay. Let me go ahead and zoom in so you guys can get a little better view of this. All right, we're going to be using our Wilson Combat Sear. Go ahead and get our Wilson Combat Sear out. And uh, guys, that is number 314 on the part number, uh, 2895. Um, none of these parts are cheap, guys. I wish they all were. They are cheaper than some of the more expensive parts. But Okay, now I'm waiting on my disconnect, so I'm going to use my factory disconnect. Now, the best way to take your disconnect is if you hold it, it has a slight curve to it. You want the curve to go to the right. You want the flat part to go on your trigger right here. You can see the flat part. This is what goes on your trigger bar. This is what goes away from it. Now your sear is almost like a half moon or a crescent moon, if you will. What you're going to do is you're going to take it and you're going to put it in. And your disconnect bends this way, so you want your sear to also bend this way. And then when you lay them flat, the two legs on the sear should pretty much touch the two the, um, I'm sorry, not the two, but the one leg on the disconnect. And I'll show you how that looks just like that. Very simple. Get a little more light on it for you guys if you need to, need to see it here. That's how it looks. And it's fully assembled the right way and the hole will actually go through both. Alright, now we're going to go ahead and take it back and put it in our gun. Okay, now the easiest way to do this is if you turn the firearm up, just like so, you can see that there is a little hole. Let me see if I can get this just right for you guys. See that little hole right there? Let's set this down. Right there. The pointed piece on the disconnector at the very top right here is going to go in that hole. So what I like to do is, is just point it down like this. You kind of got to play with it. It'll take a time or two. Do not get discouraged. And basically what you're looking for is if you look through the side of the frame, the easiest thing to do is take, bring your little flathead precision screwdriver in, wiggle it around, and it should push right through the sear and the disconnect both. 
If it doesn't, you can kind of look in and play with it just a little bit, kind of move it around. It'll take some getting used to, guys. All right, now once your screwdriver's in, it's done the right way. And shake the gun, nothing falls out. So now what I like to do is lay the gun back down flat, pull my screwdriver out. Okay, now what we're going to do is go into our rebuild kit. In the rebuild kit, you're going to have three pins that are similar in size and length, but different thicknesses. So I'll lay all these out right here. You can separate them, guys, if you feel like you're going to get confused. Um, three pins, one, two, and three. Okay, this one is the thinnest. They're all almost the exact same height. And the reason that is is the thickness of your gun. Um, the one has a small cut line in the center of it. That is actually going to be your mainspring. The middle one, which is the thicker one here, is going to be for your hammer. And the thinner one is going to be for your disconnect and your sear. So once you have those three pins separated out of the bag, you want to take the two, the thicker one and the one with the line cut in it, and set those aside. Your thinnest but same length uh, pin is going to go right in for your sear and your disconnect. You just drop it in and push and it goes right in. Now if you've got it in, you can hear it rattling, nothing falls out. That means it's in there good. Next, we're going to be doing our hammer. And for our hammer, what I'm going to show you guys real quickly is, when I bought mine, it did not come with a new hammer strut. So what we're going to have to do is knock the hammer strut out of the hammer. And to do that, we're going to be using our um, punch again, the 1 16th, kind of the perfect size because it actually fits perfectly down in here. We're going to take in some of them. Let's try this one, see if we can push it out. No, we don't have to tap it out. Some of them can be pushed out. Some of them have to be tapped out. Just take, let me go ahead and back this back up for you guys a little bit so you can see better. You're going to line your punch up with the hole right there for the pin on the hammer strut. Take your wood little block. Tap right through. Then your hammer strut by itself will come out. Now once you have your hammer strut out, you're going to want to go ahead and open up your new hammer. Now guys, you can buy the hammer strut as well. If you do, um, it's an added bonus because then you have two struts. Now your new hammer, what you're going to have to do is get a real small piece out. And I've already put this one in here. I'll show you this piece is in your Ed Brown Rebuild Kit. This is a new pin. It goes for your hammer and your hammer strut. So what you're going to do is you're going to take your new hammer. You're going to take your hammer strut. And now it should curve outward like so. Had to look at it to be sure there. You're going to drop your little pin right down in the hole. And if you did the same I did and went with a Nighthawk or even a Wilson, um, they're really good fitting, therefore you shouldn't have to punch anything in. It should just push like you've seen. Like you've seen. I'm sorry, guys. I moved it out of the camera view here. Let me back this up a little bit and get a better view. Push that out one more time. And then we'll do it again so that way you guys can see it really clearly. Basically, all you want to do is you want to take your hammer and your hammer strut. And now your hammer strut will bow out the way that it goes. It should, once put together, it should look. Just line it up. Take your pin. Push right through it. And it should wind up looking like that. Now when you've got that, we're going to take our hammer and we're going to go ahead and put it right back in there. You'll line it up. You go back to your two pins again. Not the one with the line, but the other one. Take the one with the line, set it aside. It's going to be our mainspring. We'll take this and we'll set it right in on our hammer. And you can just wiggle your hammer. It goes right in. Alright guys, now we got the hammer in. We have a few more parts. The rest of the parts are going to take a little bit of work, so those will be continued in part four of the video. Um, that is going to be replacing the duck bill. Um, the hammer was a drop in, so we didn't have to do anything to it. We're going to be replacing our duck bill and our barrel bushing, which is going to take a little light sanding. I'll show you that in a few minutes. This is Gunpowder Handshake signing off, guys. Here's the gun, work in progress. We'll finish it up on the next video. Thanks and tune in.